Welcome back to Brashonomics. I'm Ben Brashen, and, you know, we're talking about things we're thankful for, and we talked a little bit about Seattle at the beginning of the show and the real estate uh, world that we are starting to luckily be a part of, and uh, Aubrey Cohn joins us, real estate reporter with the Seattle PI. Aubrey, uh, at the top of the hour, we I discussed a little bit about how the unemployment rate is ticking down here, and uh, real estate seems to be ticking up, and I know that's something you and I actually discussed uh, a few months ago. Yeah, you know, it's uh, we continue to have uh, short supply, uh, particularly in uh, Seattle and other uh, close-in parts of King County. Prices are going up, um, and uh, houses are selling quickly. Yeah, I, I, well, I see new houses come on the market every day. I'm amazed at uh, some of the prices I'm seeing and uh, how some things, uh, how fast some of those homes are going pending. Yeah, it, uh, it, well, you know that that the lesser amount of inventory that we currently see. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, maybe where some of that inventory has gone, because you recently wrote an article uh, for the PI uh, published last week about foreclosures. Well, yeah, I mean, one thing, one theory about the lack of inventory is that uh, there are people who can't afford to put their homes on the market because prices still haven't caught up to what they paid back uh, near the peak in uh, 2007. And uh, in general, uh, it seems like the number of sales of foreclosures have been down from the last year, but th- the latest report from Realty Track, which uh, tracks foreclosure filings, found that uh, in uh, in King County and Washington, filings are actually up from a year ago, although they're they're down from where they were last month. Um, now, not, not necessarily all those homes will go into foreclosure. Some of them are just uh, delinquent, or, or the lender started the foreclosure process, and there's some evidence that lenders are doing more to to work with people. So we'll have, we'll have to see if that actually translates into those homes hitting the market. But um, we did have, uh, in King County, we did have foreclosures up uh, 9.6% from, the, uh, percent from uh, October 2000, um, uh, 2011, although they were down uh, 24% from uh, September 2012. So more people are making their payments? Uh, uh, certainly compared with a month ago. Um, and uh, you know, uh, I hope that the uh, the low mortgage rates are helping. If people can afford to refinance, or if they can work through one of these government programs that's out there to help people, um, I know that lenders are are doing a little bit more to work with people. You know, if you can lock in under four uh, percent, it certainly would be a helpful thing for people to be able to do. Yeah, especially. Uh, yeah, I mean, without a doubt, uh, Aubrey. You know, at the top of the hour, I was talking about the reasons I was thankful to be in Seattle. I know your article covered, uh, you know, Seattle trends and Washington trends versus other parts of the country. What exactly did you guys find uh, when you start comparing and contrasting different areas? Well, you know, one of the things I wanted to mention is just the stunning difference between King County and its two neighbors, uh, just within the Seattle area. We talk about the Seattle area, and often those include, that's King, Pearson, Snohomish County. Sometimes it's just uh, King and Snohomish. But uh, the, in King County, one of every uh, 1,082 homes got a foreclosure filing in October. Well, that's, um, and that's lower than the nationwide rate of uh, one in every 706 homes. Lower is a funny term here. The, the higher the number, the fewer people are getting foreclosures. Sure. Um, Pearson, Snohomish, uh, were 400, one in every 481 homes and 100, one in every 522 homes, respectively. That's like twice as many filings, uh, twice the rate of filings as King County. Uh, so that is a stunning contrast uh, to me. But King County uh, in particular and the Seattle area have remained uh, better than what we're seeing in general nationwide and certainly better than the hardest hit areas. So it really starts to play out that the core areas, of, as we've discussed, tend to be doing – even much better than in in more than just prices and uh, also just in that foreclosure world. Yeah, I, I think you have a couple of things at work. I think one thing is that um, some of the people who were uh, really reaching to be able to afford a home were were out in those outlying areas. Um, I think you also had more of the sort of tract development that got in some ways more overheated than the core areas. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think those prices have come down a lot more. So, a lot people out out in those areas have found themselves more underwater. Um, I, I, I guess those are probably the two main things I would think. And, and uh, in general, I think there's also been an increasing popularity of being closer to the job centers. So, I think that's helped to buoy the values uh, in, within King County. Is people are 
people want to be in a place where they they don't have a long commute. They want to be in a place where when they come home, they can park the car and maybe walk to a restaurant. Well, and after uh, yesterday's debacle of rain and traffic, I think that probably has been reinforced. Uh, you said it, brother. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was amazing. It, it was amazing. Have you ever seen rain like that? You know, I don't want to get into the weather, but that uh, that was like a monsoon we used to see down in Arizona. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm from Philadelphia, and so one of the things I've always told my you know people back east to say, oh, it rains all the time out here. It's like, well, yeah, but it doesn't rain very hard. You know, back east you get these huge storms where if you're outside uh, without an umbrella or even maybe even with an umbrella, you're soaked in, in 10 seconds. That, that's and, you know, Seattle just tends to kind of drizzle. That is what it felt like yesterday. Aubrey Cohen joins us, real estate reporter with the Seattle PI. Aubrey, uh, you know, you had mentioned, we talked about the core, you'd mentioned that, and then also, you know, the outlying areas and how they haven't quite rebounded. Do you think that's because a lot of those houses, you mentioned the track housing, were built in abundance kind of right towards the right towards the uh, the peak of the market and so there's just more houses to go through and and maybe less demand for them? Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, they that's where you could build a whole bunch of houses and they're all the same so they're kind of a commodity and uh and the I think those those values also just got inflated more than than what they they normally would be, um, and and yeah, there's more demand. That's uh, the the tastes have changed. Uh, people don't necessarily want to be out there, and if you do want to be out there, you know, you have you have such a huge choice that, uh, and they're all basically the same. So you, you're just competing on price. Yeah, and that uh, certainly makes it a little bit tougher for people to sell their house when there is so much more competition versus what we've seen in the core. Which is pretty much no competition. Yeah, you know, if you've got a home that's in a in a nice part of town that's fixed up, um, you know, the competition's between the buyers right now. Uh, we've returned to a world of uh, pre-inspections and uh, and uh, bidding up prices. You know, even writing letters. Though um, I do think still it's not quite where it was in 2007. I think people still look for reasons not to bid on a home if they see something that's a little weird about it or different or wrong with. The house or the location, I think people still will be a little gun shy, which which only increases the competition for those homes that are just right. Sure, and of course, uh, a little bit capped on financing too, because you don't just get to go get more money because you want it. Yeah, well, there's that, <laughs> and, and also, um, you know, th- the homes have got to uh, appraise, right? They've, um, you know, you may agree to to pay a certain amount of money for a home, but the banks are pretty cautious, and so. You know, if, you, if there's not the comps out there to, to back it up, then you got to figure it out. Yeah. Well, hey, Aubrey, thanks so much for joining us, man. We do have to go to break. Hope you guys have a, a very happy Thanksgiving over there. You too. Enjoy. Enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Again, Aubrey Cohen, a real estate reporter with the Seattle PI. When we come back, we're going to stick on real estate and talk about some of the other areas, maybe a little bit outside the core. I don't know. East side, kind of core, kind of not. Depends on where you are. We'll find out more about that from Corey Brandt. When we come back.